out of the tape, but we'll start our new tape. Okay, um, I hastily stuffed them in my bag and ran out to catch the bus. Upon boarding, I discovered the papers were missing and told the bus driver to wait for me while I went to look for them. I found them underneath a car, and as I bent to pick them up, I saw the bus starting to leave. I ran in front of the bus to stop it and fell to the ground. The bus passed over my head, and as I tried to get up, I hit my head on the bottom of the bus and fell back to the ground. The, reels went, ran, the wheels ran over me. Fortunately, a crossing guard saw what happened and called for help. The next several months I spent in the hospital and at home recuperating from a broken pelvis. The doctors feared I would never walk again. Then one day I woke up and was able to walk. God blessed me that day and has ever since. Today I am a communication major at Cleveland State University pitcher on the baseball team, and doing intern work for National Safety Town Center, publicizing safety for kids. Great, great young man. Okay, down here is Jack Warner. That's the young man who purchased the football, autographed football that Tom Gooseby donated, and of course that is Tom Gooseby presenting him the football. Okay, wish I'd have kept that. $200 seems such a big big amount at that time. Sure doesn't seem that, that big anymore. Of course, when you have a few extra dollars, it ne never looks big, but that time we didn't even have extra pennies. Okay, some of the things that were in this bi monthly is did you know the largest quilt in the world, measuring 25 feet square and containing 400 squares and 225 yards of material, was created in six months by 150 student teachers and members of the community in Columbia, South Carolina. Making the quilt was the display at the National Community Education Association Convention in Atlanta. Uh, it required 8,000 volunteer hours. Okay, that had to be fun. There's some more information in there, but I didn't read it all. Traffic safety slighted the, uh, the administration proposed budget for fiscal 1984 put highway safety on low priority. And. Uh, State and community grants under 402 get 87 million, 110 million had been authorized. I try to keep people up to date with some of that since we were working with state departments on 402 funding. High school graduates from all public and private schools number 3.1 million in 1979 and 80. If the present trend holds up, that number will be down to 2.4 million in 1990 and 92 in the U.S. Department of Education. Hmm. Congratulations to National Community Education Association for a very successful first annual National Community Education Day. They used to have that. And again, here, they started theirs in 1982, 83, 82, 82 it was. And we've been doing ours, our National Safety Town Week, since 1975. And several people at community education told us that um, because we had re received such good publicity from our, in our newsletters and from the governors that they thought they would institute their Community Education Day. They did for se uh, several years. I don't know if they're continuing, still continuing it or not. We're still doing ours. Okay, the internet, international, um, well, let me finish with community education. I'm sorry. We're extremely pleased that many community education personnel are involved with our programs around the country and encourage other community educators to participate with Safety Town within their community, stated Dorothy Schlatt, a little quote for me. The International Youth Exchange recently received strong endorsement from U.S. Secretary of State George Schultz. He termed the practice of exchange for education purpose, purposes a grant to future generations. Okay. Well, there's some missing from that, but we'll continue. March 1st, 1983, uh, the Volunteer National Center for Citizen Involvement. Honorable George Romney was the chairman. Dear Mrs. Schlad, we are very pleased to announce the final results of selection
process for the 1983 President's Volunteer Action Award. I am especially pleased to inform you that our nomination, that your nomination was among the group of 70 out of almost 2,000 received to be submitted for the final judging process. The decisions made by the final judges were extremely difficult ones because of the unique contributions made by each of the final nominees. Although your nom nomination was not one of the final winners for, of the 1983 President's Award, your special volunteer contribution is representative of the irreplaceable contributions our nation volunteers make. Your work that that all that your work and that of all American volunteers is the greatest resource that we have available to build communities that are safe, just and filled with opportunities. Again, our special salute to you for your special contribution toward making your community a better place in which to live. George Romney. Um, again, um, I've been attending some antique shows down here in Florida and I've noticed that some dealers have letters signed by uh, people who are senators and congressmen, uh, presidents, and uh, of course show business per per personalities and, and sports figures. But I didn't know that a lot of them were from senators and congressmen. Of course we have an awful lot of them. Uh, John Glenn and Metzenbaum and, and um, Oh, uh, Ron Model and, and Charles Vanek and all those people. So we're, I want to go through someday and um, maybe make copies for myself, but maybe we could sell the originals. They might be worth some money. I'm not sure, but um, we'll have to see what that goes. March 22nd. Oh, I did win an, uh, get an award, by the way. Uh, you'll see that a little bit later. We have a picture of the award. We are very pleased to announce that our March 22nd, did I say 1983? Okay. We are very pleased to announce that our first reorganizational step is completed. Effective December 22nd, 1982, National Safety Town Center is a division of International Child Safety Center. Now we had to do this because we were working more and more with other countries and they didn't feel that we included them not being international. We used the National Safety Town Center for mainly for the United States and we were still promoting of course the Safety Town Program but since some of the other countries did not do the Safety Town Program per se, they just wanted information for their schools and their classrooms, we went to International Child Safety Center. Okay, and here's the description and explanation. National Safety Town Center will continue and expand services and educational information and materials to our programs. International Child Safety Center will provide services, educational information, and materials to nursery, elementary schools, and special classes and events. Okay, thank you for allowing us this opportunity to be of service to you. We eagerly look forward to providing you additional services and information as we, we continue our reorganizational procedures. All right, and based on that, then we had I'm not sure who put this up, but this is, we had this done. I think Gail did the original one, the fact sheet, but we updated it every year. Uh, at least maybe every two years we try to update it. And in this one it says, uh, it always started out, that we are the only nonprofit tax exempt organization solely dedicated to preschool early childhood safety education. It was established, officially established in 1974. Um, Internationally headquartered in Cleveland, Ohio. Bill Cosby serves as honorary chairman. In 1983, we had over 650 programs in operation in the United States and 18 other countries. And then it went on to list all of the things that we uh, uh, had the, the program copyrighted. What well, does for the coordinators provides speakers, develops presentations, appoints coordinators, directs efforts conducts the National Safety Town Week and the Breakfast, uh, organizes and conducts, conducts training seminars, develops and prints information as needed, and explains our two copyrights. Um, personal activity work with local and national government officials, makes available any legislative materials to our people, prepares and disseminates bi-monthly report, conducts research pertaining to child development as it relates to safety education, that was my my particular baby. Uh, publicly recognizing individuals who promoted direct efforts towards safety for kids, 
prepared two case studies which appeared in the International Public Relations News, prepared articles that have appeared in American School Board Journal, Nation School, Women's Day, McDonald's, Exxon, uh, Prudential, all Kiwanians, Rotarians, and so forth. Annual conducts National Safe Town Week Breakfast. A Dorothy Schlatt authored a series of six child safety books for Children's Press. Uh, was presented the National Volunteer Actors Awards in 1977. Presented a career one of achievement for, of the year, one of 60 people across the country to receive the President's Volunteer Action Award citation. That's the one from George Romney. Uh, recognizing uh, 20 years of dedication and safety. Uh, okay. So that was, that's an interesting bit of information. This is just a quote on this, and I thought it was great. Time is like a good champagne. A little goes a long way. And that's very good. Okay. Now, here's this President Volunteer Action Award citation that we received. Uh, as I said, remember, it was presented by the, I want to get the right name, uh, National Center for Citizen Involvement. George Romney was the chairman. Okay, there's the citation. And it was presented to me by Ken Kovach. He was the local director of their chapter in Cleveland. And of course, the citation was signed by Ronald Reagan. And I believe it was on April 13th. Let me see if I can read it here. I think it's April 13th, 1983. And of course, what I'm holding here is a large bouquet uh, of flowers that was sent to me from Bill Cosby. I'm sure his secretary took care of it. And that was Julie Phillips, of course. And I have to tell you that when I was up at the podium, this was in a large room, I can't recall where it was, but there were several hundred people in attendance. And the, po the, um, the podium was raised. Uh, because the room was flat, everybody was sitting out in a flat chair, it wasn't raised. But this was raised, and I was, and it was a long podium, uh, a long DS, I guess, the podium was there. And George, uh, Ken Kovach was presenting this to me, and after he presented it to me, he had me to stand there for a minute, and then on the side of the, of the, um, on the side of the room, the door opened, and in came this lady carrying this huge, bouquet of flowers and walked up the stairs and everyone in the room went, oh, oh, you know, and then he read the little card and somewhere I have the card and we will read that in with that. Okay, well here you can, oh, it's held at the city club. Okay, there it is. And there uh, Ken Kovach is reading and you can see, they just presented this to me and you can see my surprise. I was just so delighted and so excited and surprised. It was just beautiful. Cleveland City Club is where it was presented. <laughs> that was great. Okay. Now, these are some of my people. This, of course, is my husband. This is Frank. This is Chuck Sawatsky from Ameritrust, and he was at the event with me, and Dick Deschamps from the Growth Association. This is Judge August Pritel, a very good friend of mine. Um, and Jackie, heard like a, my right-hand gal and a sweetheart of a gal. Okay. What a wonderful day that was. And here's the news release on this April 30th. Uh, President citation. Two special citations from the President of the United States were pre presented to Dorothy Schlad. Two citations? I can't remember two. I just thought I had the one. I have to look that up. Uh, for community involvement. Presentation took place at the City Club and so forth. Okay, almost 2,000 nominations were submitted for the 1983 Volunteer Action Award. The National Center for Citizens Involvement, which administered the eight, 90, 90, 1983 awards, announced that 20 Volunteer Action Awards were presented this week. Oh, and 60 presidential citations. That's how I got so that was the volunteer award. That was the big one, the 20, and then I must have gotten an additional, another one for being the finalist in that 60 one, as that letter said. Okay. Uh, it gives some background of what Safety Town was all about. 
and that's it. Okay. All right, March 1983. We did uh, plan for some seminar and training sessions. Two day events planned for May 20th and 21st will be he held at the Sheraton uh, Aurora in Cleveland. Um, May 20th for all the teachers, the police officers, and personnel. And the training session is scheduled on, at SeaWorld on May 21st for all the teenagers, except for the teen instructors. Dorothy Schlatt and other speakers will talk with teens about their role in development of the four and five year old child as child development. And we will have a tarp there with Shamu and with Clancy and SeaWorld will print 25,000 tickets to disseminate to each of the graduation uh, and 25 cents will come to the center. We talked about that before. First annual Safety for Kids Celebrity Golf Tournament is scheduled for August 29th at Aurora Country Club. Tom Gooseby, former Cleveland Brown, is chairing the event and will contact local media and sports celebrities. Uh, Frank, well Tom did, did a lot of work, but Frank really did an awful lot of, of work uh, with Tom. April, National Lifesavers 2 conference was held April 5th to 7th in Denver, Colorado. 683 delegates were there, including myself and Elizabeth Dole, who was Secretary of Transportation, who was the featured speaker. During her address, President Reagan called and congratulated the delegates for the dedication to safety. And I'll tell you, I got chills up and down my spine and my whole body when we heard him, when I heard him anyway, over loudspeaker, because this was 1983, and I'd been in safety 20 years, and that's the first time that we ever had, not, not only the president, but some important official, really top official, really take time out to recognize what the importance of safety. Um, and for to hear his voice and, and say that was just fabulous. I had talked with Elizabeth Dole afterwards and, and I even wrote letters to her, a follow-up letter, and telling her how wonderful it was for her or whoever it was to arrange that because that was just, just fabulous. I mean, we had people like President Vince Toffin and the National Safety Council, but those were people in safety. We knew the importance of it. But to have someone like uh, a senator call in, which we never had, uh, but to have the president, and especially President Reagan, uh, it was it was fabulous. Uh, really gave you everybody there an extra shot in the arm to keep go back home and keep going that we were that our efforts were being recognized. Seminar training session plans were were progressing. Uh, activity books. We had some new dot to dot books and so forth. The ABC books um, that we introduced to our people. The All Ohio Congress was held April 12th and 13th in Columbus, and of course. Frank and I attended because we, um, I think we chaired some sessions there as well. And the third annual National Safe Town Breakfast was scheduled for September 19th, which will be co-sponsored by Stouffer's this year. Safety songs have been on the drawing board for several years, are being prepared for 1985 programs, and that's the safety song tapes with, with Debbie Fla Flager, I believe she pronounced her name. And then it had uh, 1983 present volunteer action award was presented Dorothy Schlatt, which we just talked about. Okay. Remember, this is what happened previously. Um, Greater Cleveland activities. See, I didn't have that sheet in the January, February one, so that's why some of them, and there's one missing out of here. Cleveland West Rotary Club gave a donation to the center to assist us in continuing to promote the importance of safety for kids. As a result, our president was the featured speaker at their March meeting. She addressed the group on our program and organization and thanked the members for their donation and su support. Thank you to Mr. Herb Hoppe, attorney of Ziegler, Metzger, Miller and & Hoppe, and member of our board of directors for contacting the club on behalf and making all the arrangements. A six-month review of NSTC activities and accomplishments was prepared and submitted to the Cleveland and George Gunn Foundation as a fulfillment of the requirements of the respective grants. A lot of work. Shaker Heights Safety Town personnel contacted the center and requested assistance in updating various aspects of their program. Our president met with program representatives and discussed several methods of implementing the updated information. Uh, 
again, we'll discuss this in the local, but Shakers started out with a 20-hour program and some, somewhere along the way they went to a 10-hour program and didn't include the parents and it was interfering with their um, camping and people felt the program was not the quality so I had the mayor, the chief of police, the recreation director, um, different people in the office trying to, to uh, get this all resolved. Heights Chamber, uh, we did eventually but it took a few years, a change of uh, personnel I think and administration. Heights Chamber of Commerce. A March meeting was held at the Sheraton Inn, was attended by NSTC staff. New members were introduced. Villa Serena senior citizens were contacted to assemble component parts of our graduation hats. Elaine Roth and ST volunteers handling all the details with the ladies. Uh, she, what she wanted to do is she took all the different parts of the hat, took them out to Villa Serena, and had the ladies work on them. But again, um, when she came back, a lot of them were not done properly because there was just one of her, and I guess she couldn't keep going around the ladies fast enough while they were staping and gluing. But uh, they did some some good work, but we just continued that because it just uh, uh, Elaine took a full time job, and as I said, unless you have volunteers do it, it doesn't. It's not profitable. Public relations board meeting was held on April 19th at the Midday Club. Uh, members were updated on the center's activities and about the first annual safety for kids celebrity golf tournament. I think if we could have had again the, the safety for kids um, golf tournament since it was the old NFL alumni players had we been able to I would have maybe hope Tom could have carried the ball but he had so many things going for him he was still working at the university but I think that's something that we could have made into a big national event and had a national sponsor on television for. Auction items, dinner passes and salt, we were gathering those again. Greater Cleveland Safety Council held its 50th anniversary and our president was in attendance to meet and talk with many, many people, of course. I even said a few words on behalf of the Safety Council. Chillicothe, Ohio is the initial stages of organizing the Safety Town program to operate this summer, Dorothy Schlad and husband Frank attended a general meeting uh, thanks to Stan Mitchell, princ principal of Hopewell Elementary, for serving as their spark plug and getting the ball rolling. Mike Cargyle, president of the Jamie organization, met with Dorothy Schlatt to discuss publicity, public relations, and so forth. He really, for a PR man, he was, he had a great plan. He wanted me to work on a plan, uh, like a, a three and five year plan, which you need, and I agreed with that. But why I liked his is he said what we kept doing is had to keep repeating what we've been doing. And he said what we should do is do this, go on to the next step, repeat what you've done to the first step, go on to the third step, repeat what you've done with the second step, and keep putting out new materials. And we, we couldn't do that. We had to keep basically saying the same thing over and over because we kept talking to new people. And Mark D. Francisco did not standing job in organizing the national press clips. Uh, he's very interested in promoting safety for kids and has been appointed to our public relations board. And you'll see some of his work in just a few minutes here. I think we have it here. Okay, um, here's some different quotes. Stephen Mancini was the National Organization Advisory Council for Children out of Washington, out of New York, I'm sorry, and he came to our seminar that we held at SeaWorld. And um, he had some different quotes. He said, we cannot continue to think that we as a nation can thrive or even survive unless all components and sectors of this country are willing to renew the commitment and their attention to our children and youth. So he was way before Hillary and Bill Clinton. It is not only, <laughs> I think uh, we all felt that we who worked with children back in the 60s, even probably before that. It is not only important for the children of the 90s, it is important, it is perhaps more vital for the children of two or three generations from now. We must bring to, to broad public discussion the challenge yet ahead and set into motion enduring processes that will address them for years, indeed decades to come. For our leaders, it is time not for speeches but for listening. Our children and youth need intelligent acts of caring that will 
if it's just in danger, that, that's a typo here, in gender, feelings of pride, feelings to type twice, belong, uh, belonging and, and competency. Our future as future security requires little more, but certainly no less. Okay. I read these and I can't believe we let these go out. Maybe this now this looks like a real copy. World Safety News, Washington, D.C. An administrator, Diane Sneed, had the idea of using fortune cookies to promote safety belt use. She had a batch baked at her own expense with the message, Confucius say, buckle up, seat belt, safe face. Okay. Paris, France, a French insurance company is experimenting with auto insurance rates based on the distance driven. It is estimated that more than 30% of drivers travel more than 5.625 miles a year. So that became the cutoff point. Okay, I don't know where this place is in England. It's A A L T R I N C H A M, England. Being given a ticket for causing an obstruction, a visiting motorist complained that the village road was so narrow it was difficult to park without causing an obstruction. Okay. And this is uh, simply a projection, children and youth in the 90s. And this probably was uh, part of Stephen Mancini's speech at the seminar. We decided to try something new. I'm not sure when we introduced this. We'd have to look. It's not that important. But uh, we went into some nice gray paper, and it was a heavy textured paper. Uh, people tell us. Again, we listen to all the corporate people, and uh, they said, you know, if you want to be respected, you have to spend money to make money. So we went with this for a while. It was nice, but then we went back to the white paper. Okay, May 3rd, 1983. Here's a fun part again. I don't know where this came from. This is when I returned from the Wayne Corporation. I had gone down there the second time to the Wayne Corporation on May 3rd, 1983, to meet with the new people because Mr. Leo Kevin had passed away. Uh, some t I think a few years, maybe a year or two back, but it took a while to get organized, and I wanted to meet the new staff and see if they'd continue to do something for the organization. My husband wrote this to me. I'll let you see this. Okay. It says, Hello, dear. Letters to the mayor and Mr. Chapman are on the sofa. Books are done. T-shirts and booklet flyer is on sofa. Could not reduce any less without major distortion. I tried for 30 minutes. Had to make decision. Hope you like it. He had to take, he took a lot of the things to the university because he got a discount at the university being on the faculty and to do the bi-monthly newsletter, and that's what he was talking about. Uh, I'll be home between 12.30 and 12.45. Save me some room on the sofa. sofa. Love ya. Hope your meeting went well. Did they donate an old bus? <laughs> okay. Um, I put. I responded to him. Evidently, I either came in after he was asleep or vice versa. But I, letters are super. Thank you. Yes. You. Yay! No screw ups whatsoever. And then it said, "Fantastic. Thank you. Okay." Uh, the meeting went very well, lots of ideas, also very productive drive as I dictated many letters and notes in recorder. That, I can't imagine how many times I dictated and dictated and dictated, how many hours I did that. Okay. We had, um, we talked about having our, uh, uh, seminar, honey, our seminar at SeaWorld, and here are, there's a picture of it. Okay. You can see there's Clancy, and that's Patty Filer here, and here's Clancy taking Shamu around the tarp and showing Shamu how to stop his feet and look both ways before crossing the street. We thought it was just a fun thing to do with him. Okay. And what does it say? In cooperation with SeaWorld of Ohio, the sp center sponsored a training session for teenage instructors throughout northeastern Ohio. The 
morning session with child, Dorothy Schlatt and a child psychologist discuss aspects of the preschool child development and the rewards ben benefits of being an instructor. During a lunch break, Clancy presented a safety magic show and a new singing trio, The Heartbeats, entertained the group. And The Heartbeats was Debbie Flager's group. She had two other girls. They played guitars and uh, a little um, keyboard, and they sang. Uh, at the afternoon session, Clancy portraying a teen demonstrated proper techniques with Shamu. And then after we were over 3 o'clock, the teen stayed at SeaWorld and could stay there until it closed. Oh, now this is a real fun thing. and it, it, uh, I was so pleased with this. This was uh, June 6, 1982. My mom never, my mom was great seamstress with sewing and um, did so many things for the for the center. Uh, just one one super 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 lady. Um, but I'd been she'd been at the office one day and made some reference about uh, typing because she'd never type. So I put her down at the typewriter and I put down here. I was so proud of her for wanting and and willing to try and learn new things. And this was in 1982 and. Uh, and she was at that time, let's see, she's, today is 98, and she's 92. So she was in her 80s and uh, wanted to learn things. Um, and I thought that was great. But uh, this is what she typed, and I'm going to say this. This, is, this means a lot to me. She was, had a lot of energy, worked like a beaver, gave her a project and didn't stop until it was done. So I learned later on in life to give her smaller projects. But oh, you know, if it was a huge, huge pro project, she'd go to the bathroom and have something small to eat. But if it was something that she could handle within a couple hours, she would just sit there and, and work away at it. Okay, uh, bi-monthly report, May and June. Uh, Eckridge Corporation, Jack Yagi, um, met and Royce Brewer met with Dorothy and Frank Schleier regarding future avenues of cooperation. All these people who were directors of uh, the director of programming or directing of public relations um, all tried desperately to get their top corporate people to assist us in some way. Couldn't get it done. So they gave us whatever small amounts they could do. I happen to be watching up at the big screen because I don't hear the sound, but they're showing flashbacks of Tanya Harding hitting Nancy Kerrigan or the actual event back then. Okay, Camper Insurance has given National Safe Town Center permission to continue printing and disseminating their fire lessons books. Okay, um, we have one of those. We'll show those to you later in the office. But I wanted to change the wording around. They gave me permission to do that. Wayne Corporation and NSTC are investigating promotional possibilities. Our president met with Curtis Atkinson, the new president, uh, Terry Woodsaw, vice president, and J Jan S. Clark, marketing services managers, to update them on our activities. So, you know, anytime I went anywhere, I'm meeting with at least three or four of their people their, t their PR director, their vice presidents, and here was just me by myself, sometimes Frank, uh, and I think they finally started to understand that we didn't have all these people back in the office. I didn't have a public relations director uh, to follow up, and they weren't going to do any promotions, knowing these people knew how much work was involved, and they weren't going to uh, tie in with us unless we had a full staff. Okay, Wayne provided our first national publicity in 1974, and what I thought it would be nice to do while I met with him is, in 1984, have a 10-year promotion that they could say, look, here's, we're so proud of what we started, and look how it's grown, and take a pat on the back for him. But um, never did anything with that. Seminar training sessions were both successful at SeaWorld. Uh, for the teachers and the teens. Remember, one w the morning was for the teachers and the afternoon was for the teens. 
I'm sorry, the, the one day was for the teens, and the next day was for the, um, one day was for the teachers at, Aurora, at the Sheraton Aurora, which was on the 20th, I think, and on the 21st was the one at SeaWorld for the training. It was a two-day event, because a lot of the teen, teens, uh, them, not the teens, a lot of the teachers had requested two days because we couldn't get everything in at one time. Okay, uh, June, 19, uh, June, National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Federal Highway Administration conducted a meeting on June 6th in Washington, D.C. regarding National Pedestrian Committee. Our president was among 20 national safety advisories attending. As a result, National Safety Town Center will host a booth display at upcoming National Pedestrian Conference September 21st to the 23rd in Boulder, Colorado. Motorcycle Safety Foundation President Dr. Charles Hartman met with Dorothy Schlad uh, in their national offices regarding future working relationship. Uh, when I went out there, I think their offices were in Maryland, of course, this was absolutely great because the Motorcycle Safety Foundation was paid for by all the motorcycle companies. So, I mean, it was great. They had a ready-made <laughs> base of income where we didn't have that. And that's what people kept telling me. If I was just so, you know, solely into fire or solely into playground, we could go to the playground manufacturers and they could all, because we were bits and pieces and, again, we could have probably gotten some, we, we, we sent letters to the playground equipment, we sent letters to the fire uh, manufacturers uh, of fire equipment and fire safety equipment. Um, but again, it, they knew it was going to be diluted because we were doing so many other things. But I wasn't going to change because I believed in what I was doing for those kids was right, and I still do, and always will. Prudential Vice President of Public Relations Joe Vecchione met with our president regarding necessary information to submit a proposal request for 1984 and Vice President of Community Relations Cole Lewis met with Dorothy regarding printing our new catalog progress, progressing on schedule. At that time it was. First annual Safety for Kids tournament uh, event was progressing nicely. Le letters disseminated to Cleveland corporations uh, to sponsor and so forth. Safety songs get their first review by our president. I, I, I quoted here, it is essential that wording be appropriate and complement our program's curriculum," states Dorothy Schlatt. Management, management Assistant Program, called MAP, manager Bernadette Staples met with Dorothy Schlatt, Bruce Akers, uh, who was Vice President of Marketing and Merit Trust, and Judy Burnan. Uh, Judy was president of JB Enterprises, which is a company that made uh, a lot of different, um, oh, do I want to say that we purchased from, from the center of keychains and different things you could sell. But we met for a diagnostic review for a proposal regarding our program and organization. MAP is a United Way service. And now MAP had uh, volunteer people in, in the community. This particular person they assigned to us was John Yankee who came in and we had to write again. He spent oh several months, several weeks, I think three months with us at least, working on, again, our purpose and objectives, and and we had to work on a three-year project in five years. In three years, how many newspapers would we be in? And, I mean, oh, where do you see this? This is on the office. It's unbelievable. We had to project everything. And I said, how can you possibly know this? And they said, well, it really doesn't matter. Uh, it really doesn't matter as long as you have something something down for them. And I just thought that was the dumbest thing. I couldn't understand that. But Okay, so that was, uh, that's in that one. This is uh, the Greater Cleveland Activities, which was on the back side of the page. New Cleveland Women Journal, uh, editorial assistant Pat Patricia Toth conducted an in-depth interview with Dorothy Schlatt regarding the program and organization. The children of Solon Safety Town dem demonstrated safety rules that they learned and Michael Fernberg was the photographer, and uh, uh, Elaine Ross helped with that as well. Ameritrust of Cleveland is co -op in cooperation with National Safety Town Center, purchased 808 puzzles for Cuyahoga Metropolitan Housing Authority, 
and 498 puzzles for the Cleveland, Ohio Safety Town graduates. Special thanks to Bruce Akers for continuing our continuing support of our program and organization. I was so happy that we didn't have to go through all that again with him and, and saying get publicity and all. I think since we got so much publicity for the hats for CMHA the, the year, a few years prior to this that um, doing this was a little bit easier. But again, all we charged him, and that was probably our fault uh, in submitting a proposal to him, but I don't know if they would have paid any more. We charged a dollar, I think it was a dollar or dollar fifty cents for a puzzle at that time. Uh, it just enough for the puzzle so to give out. So it paid for the printing cost. Morning Exchange host Fred Griffith opened our June 2nd segment by interviewing Dorothy Schlatt and displaying the President's Volunteer Action Award citation presented April 20th. Hostess Jan Jones interviewed Mark DeFrancisco, at, which he told about his traumatic story about being run over by the bus. Many nice comments were received about this segment. The Cleveland 500 race will be held July 3rd at Burke Lakefront Airport. National Safe Town Center will again be will participate in set up the portable safety town. Um, they said they had made some corrections and, and improvements and that they wouldn't run in the same problem as last year and that we should definitely get some financial uh, <laughs> get some monies uh, after um, after this particular event, which we didn't. Again, they had some problems. Public Relations Board met on June 21st at Stouffer's Inn on the Square. Again, the SeaWorld tickets were sent out throughout the country. Uh, I'm sorry, to uh, Michigan, Ohio, and Pennsylvania. And here I said, Safety Town will become a reality in Cleveland. It will operate for one week, uh, session in June through August. Free of charge, special thanks to Officers Ross Benjamin and Larry Rutherford for organizing and teaching the program. And I gave credit to Thomas Baginski, who was the Traffic Commissioner, Regional Turner, Safety Director, William Hatton, Chief of Police, for supporting the program. Now, those two police officers, I found out, they uh, went to Cleveland Heights and Shaker Heights, um, and I think they went to, to Bedford. And those three police officers there at the time called me and said that these two police officers from Cleveland were asking for information on safety town. And when all the police officers in those three communities that were doing the program told them to contact National Safe Town Center and contact me for the, for the materials, they said they didn't want to spend any money and they wanted to do their own program. But yet they got copies of materials from the three safety towns that, that I mentioned, Bedford, Cleveland Heights, and um, Shaker Heights. But uh, for some reason, uh, I was told, and I had heard because, you know, you always hear so much of the, uh, the white policemen, uh, the policemen being, a lot of the white policemen being against the black black uh, people, and I was told that because Bill Cosby was my honorary chairman that they didn't want anything to do with our organization. But you just have to overlook that and keep going. So one Chamber of Commerce uh, meeting was attended by our president and NST Representative Dick Atkinson. They talked about various chamber members and promoting our upcoming golf outing. Stouffer's always sent four golfers and they paid a corporate hole for us, which meant they got their name on, the, on, um, on a sign at the hole and they also um, donated um, their Stouffer little bags, um, their cooler bags, so Dick Atkinson helped with that. However, uh, Bruce Akers never supported our golf outing. He just didn't like a golf outing. But he tried to, to <laughs> tell me that we had to do things to do fundraising, and yet we had a fundraising event, and he wouldn't support it because he didn't like it. So it was catch-22 with him, I think. Uh, Council Small Enterprise meeting was at the University Club, which I attended. Uh, Ken Fuhrer was the main force behind the preliminary stu study of the Cuyahoga County Safety Towns compiled by the five Cleveland State University students in 1982. Uh, he did that preliminary study. 
Buchanan is conducting a more extensive evaluation for his thesis as the preliminary study did not contain the in-depth data we, that we require. Upon completion, National Safety Town Center will finalize the information for publication, which we never did because it wasn't really, when I looked at it, I didn't think it had that much uh, substance to it. Okay, now, this one I'll show you. Oh, remember I mentioned to you about Alan Conrad, how he would have a suit on and then get, during the course of his presentation, get down to the t-shirt. And that's what he would finally get down to is the t-shirt presentation. Okay. And here I'm just presenting a certificate to the people who attended the seminar. And here we have Patty Filer and Clancy. And we have Clancy and Alan Conrad and some of the teens. Remember, this is our newsletter going out to the people after the event. And there's Clancy and Shamu there. I'll hold that for just a second. Maybe you can see it. Okay. And here we had some did you know facts. And here is the um, Bruce Akers from Ameritrust and the two um, police officers, Douglas Tuff and Kristen Kretler, um, and, and two little girls working on the puzzles when we gave the puzzles to them. And there we gave, we, we printed Ameritrust name on the back of each puzzle. We'll show you that, and we'll splice that in here later on, okay? Okay, Friday, July 1st, 1983. I loved this article. Uh, unsolicited articles are always so great, especially editorials. Safety Town pays dividend. And I saw that and I thought, boy, wouldn't this be great to go to a stockbroker, insurance company, and work around that uh, and invest in the future with kids. And I mean, the idea is anytime I saw these, this motor kept running up here and saying, work, work, work. Well, let me read this to you. Robbie and Michael Gandy of Menor learned more than just simple traffic laws during their recent two-week safety town program sponsored by the Menor JCs. In fact, warnings about swallowing pills probably are responsible for the quick thinking of Robbie Five, who might have saved his brother, brother from a trip to the hospital the boy's father, Robert, tells us that Robbie saw two-year-old Michael with a pill in his hand. It turned out to be a tranquilizer that was accidentally dropped on the floor by a relative who had been visiting sev several days earlier. Robbie took the pill from his little brother and gave it to his parents. Gandhi is convinced Safety Town helped. Now that was there it is. There's the man who wrote it. His name was Chuck Cobley, community editor. And of course, we sent him a nice certificate and a letter. I never met him. Never met him. I think, I know, I, I'm i hoping that at our Safety Town with Breakfast, we invited him to the breakfast and gave him a certificate. I'm not sure that we did, but uh, okay. Now, this is a better picture close-up of the, the one that was in the newsletter of Bruce Akers and Ameritrus donating the puzzles. Okay. And now here on the back, well, we'll save this one for a little bit later. Okay, that goes for this one. Uh, here's another article, August 3rd, 1983. Let me see if I can get a good copy. There's one here. Um, this was in Lawrence, New Jersey. And here's a picture of the teens. It says, on October 16, 1974, Dorothy Schlad, National Safety Town Director, Tom Kozlowski, Lawrence J.C., and Larry Kasnick, Assistant Superintendent, presented the concept of safe, Safety Town, an early childhood program. Mrs. Schlad's opening remarks at the public safety education program will still serve as the cornerstone for the Lawrence Township chapter. My quote was, being safety minded does not occur by chance. It is the result of constant training. Just as a baby must learn to walk before he or she runs, 
So must children learn how to protect themselves from childhood injury, childhood hazards before encountering the adult situa situations. Only through proper formal instruction can we expect the child to respond safely. Parents and teachers have a responsibility to provide children proper information and training in order that they may be able to evaluate right from wrong and react safely. The Lawrence Safety Town Program has grown significantly from the town meeting held in 1974. Russell Stanley, principal of the school, serves as coordinator. And then there's pictures of the teens. But that's a nice quote. And uh, I did not know that it serves as a cornerstone for their chapter, for their program. July, by monthly, July and August, 1983. Uh, the Management Assistant Program, uh, Bernadette Staples informed Dorothy Schlad that our, our request was approved, uh, and they assigned John Yankee, Associate Dean and Professor of Social Work at Case Western Reserve, to work with our organization in preparing our three-year plan. To objectively evaluate our program, the president provided Dr. Yankee with in-depth related info. He was most impressed and high, highly commended everyone involved with Safety Town. Okay. Edith Bunny Wilson was involved in the formation of Newark, New Delaware Safety Town four years ago, coordinated the entire program for Newcastle County, and assisted Elton, Maryland, coordinating established the Safe Town in 1983. The National Safe Town Board of Directors appointed Bunny as our East Coast coordinator. We are pleased to welcome her as part of our Safety Town family. Golf outing is drawing near. New flyers and information were disseminated. Players continue to sign up and, and donations are recorded as they arrived. We sent a notice out first to all the corporations telling them when it was, uh, like six months in advance, and then we sent, I think every six weeks, a month or six weeks, we sent a different follow-up. Date is getting near, you know, uh, send in your reservation and all that kind of thing. North Coast Alive, co-host Rob Bozen and Pat Schrobach, uh, S-B-R-O-C-C-O, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Sabrokoa, I'm not sure, interviewed Dorothy Schlad about the organization and program, while Jane Bozen was filmed uh, the corresponding segments on Bedford Safety Town. Uh, Gail Kalkar on, was filmed with her book on Cuyahoga County Safety Town, and Debbie Flager on the entire on the series of the 18 songs that she was writing. It was a 28-minute segment. It will be aired in September on Viacom. And thanks to Lori Dunkel from Bedford for letting us film the actual kids on the program. Uh, at the site. In August, American Driver and Traffic Safety Education Association held its conference August 10th to the 15th in El Paso, Texas. And I'm mentioning these places so you know the time and that I did a lot of traveling around the country. During the Safety Town segment, Sergeant Van Knight explained El Paso's program and Dorothy Schlatt answered numerous questions. Uh, President-elect Glenn Cantlin invited our president to present our program at the conference in the Florida Driver and Traffic Safety Education in Tampa in November, and the Southern Conference, one in Len in February, both of which we attended. Loose press clippings feature hundreds of articles throughout the summer on many of our local programs. Gail Kalkar is sending letters to each editor thanking the paper for publicizing the program and commending the local communities and so forth. The media has played a tremendous role and greatly assisted in importance of safety for kids. Uh, loose press clippings, you paid, we had to pay for it a monthly fee and so much per article, but at least we got articles around the country. And then what Gail would do, as I said, it's great, great, strictly PR, no income coming in, but since each clip had the date, the name of the newspaper, and the person writing the article, uh, she had pretty much a standard form letter, differ, it varied, but and she would send each one a thank you note. So when we stop and think of all these things that we did, and again, this is extremely important, this has to be in this final video, of how much we did with the media people and thanking them, acknowledging them uh, whenever they did anything on, on child safety, 
I think this is why we played a major, major role in getting safety for kids where it is today and where it has been the past few years, um, simply because of a lot of the, the public relations and PR work that we did. Uh, ninth Annual National Safety Town Week is scheduled for September 18th through the 24th, and our third National Safety Town Week breakfast is the 19th. We try to have the breakfast that first Monday of the week uh, during National Safety Town Week. The safety songs, uh, Debbie met with Dorothy on various ideas uh, for appropriate sound effects and specific wording in conjunction with our education materials. And then our first annual Safe Kids Golf Tournament, August 28th at Aurora Country Club, was a swinging success, is what it says there. Okay. Now, this is still the August issue. Okay, and there we'll show, here's our golf outing, and here are some of the NFL players, former NFL players that we had, uh, retired ones. Let me name them. There's Paul Warfield. I think anyone knows Paul, anyone in football knows Paul Warfield. Dave Robinson, who had his Super Bowl ring on. Dick Shafraff. Marion Motley, the great Marion Motley. Tom Gooseby. And then, yes, and there I am there in the middle. That's one of my favorite pictures. I just love that one. Okay. I don't know if I'm holding that down low enough or not. But. Now, the part on the top here is... Introducing the Crooked River Music Company. As I've mentioned, my husband sings Barbershop and Barbershop Quartet. And this year, will, I think, will be their 23rd or 24th year with the Crooked River Music Company. Here in Florida, he sings with another quartet. But this is where he, when they sang at, this is on Grand Ole Opry, the stage of Grand Ole Opry. And this is when they sang at Opryland Park with uh, Roy, Ako Roy Akoff. Of course, he was in their dressing room as well. And I went along because Billy Anderson, of course, was down in Nashville, and he made our tapes for us, our sa safety song tapes. And um, also, I did some publicity. I took their publicity pictures. I thought it was only fair, since Frank did so much nice volunteer work for me, that he had a nice big opportunity here that I should go down and take some video and pictures. and. Um, do that for them, which we did. They were down, we were down there for maybe two, I think two, two days. Okay. Then the article here on the back was the foundation, foundation for grandparenting. Now there's another article we could use. I'll read it and see how up to date it was. And um, then we put some did you know articles down in here. Okay. September 9th, nineteen. Whoops, this is 1982, a national state misfile, misfile. We haven't had one of those for a little while. This is from Howard Metzenbaum. Oh, and it looks like it's a little smudged here. I wish it wouldn't, wouldn't have been smudged. Well, we have lots of letters from him. Um, this is for national, uh, he has here, their efforts, your efforts to promote child safety are most commendable, and it is my sincere hope that you will continue your outstanding work for many years to come. I invited him to National Safe Town with breakfast. That has to go in another file, 1982. Thank you. Now, what is this? What do we have here? Oh, third annual National Safe Town with breakfast. Again, you know how those things go. You have to do a lot of Writing you a court, you invited to a breakfast. We sent out an announcement on that. And I just want to find the program and see who we honor this year. Come on, we have to have a program. I have to have a program. I can't believe we didn't keep a lot of these programs. What do we have here? Okay. Some of the people, well, I guess Bruce Akers, Bill Bryant, uh, Honorable Fred Coleman, Cam Elliott, 
Van, Van Doren, Dale Finley, Richard Evans, Nancy Frank, James Griffith, Herb Hoppe. As Bill Bryant said, it was the who's who of people in Cleveland in those days. I will not... Uh, what is this? Do I see this as a copy? No, nope, not a copy. Well, we'll find one and we'll put one in here, I'm sure. Okay. Um, just thank you letters to these people. Copies of pictures we want. We must have a lot of pictures here. Paula, Wilm Paula Wilmot. Dear Paula, below are listed the pictures we have chosen from our National Safety Town Week breakfast on September 19th. All pictures are to be 5 by 7 in black and white at the price of $1.75 each. And there's a lot of pictures. Well, some of those pictures I sent to the individual people. That's what it is. But I still should have some pictures left. Got to find some pictures. Now, we had Candy Corn came. Isn't that cute? Candy Corn, that's her name. C-A-N-D-Y-K-O-R-N. She was congressional aide to Senator Howard Metzenbaum. So, while he couldn't attend, he did send someone and Claudia Lee. Jabo, J A B O, was congressional aide to uh, federal courthouse. Let me see who she was. I don't know if she was with uh, Mary Rose Okara or one of them, but she was an aide. Okay. So we sent all these little things out. And they always send proclamations, Mary Rose Okar and Mets and Bonds. Oh, here it is, here it is, here it is, here it is, here it is. Okay. Here's our program. I knew we had one. That's how it looked. Always kept the same. The same back with Phil Cosby. Changed the dates, but then we put in the governors that gave us proclamations, what our menu was for breakfast. And this one we gave a special award to Andrew, Andy... Uh, Craneck was a beautiful plaque. I hope we have, a, I'm sure we have to have a picture. And then all the people that received awards, corporate, and then we broke it down to the media. You could see the list was getting bigger and bigger. Okay. And that was it. All right, I'm glad I found that. That was nice to know because I thought we had completely, completely, I'm going to put it right in front so we know where it is. I took it out of five. Okay, September, October 1983. We're getting down there. News releases on positive responses of Dorothy Schlatt's first four child safety books um, were disseminated to 500 newspapers across the country. We must have put this, or Gail must have sent these out for a long time. We, she had a book on all the newspapers around the country. I forgot about her doing that. That was nice. Okay. We, we, we got the comments from uh, librarians, from teachers, from kids, uh, and some, as I said, when, we, uh, when they would go out and we'd have a booth display and have the books there, people would walk by and say, oh, we have them in our library, and they're always on, there's a long wait form, and, and uh, nursery school teachers would tell us that uh, when it was time to let the kids go to, to the shelves and pick out whatever book that Safe Town books were the first books to go. So it was really exciting. Third annual, uh, I'm going to stop here for a minute. I think we should do, again, include this in the national video because that's, that's so important about how uh, the books being, they were the first series of child safety books, um, how they excited the kids and how the kids loved them and the parents loved them. Third annual National Safety Town Week Breakfast was co-sponsored by Stouffer's. We talked about that. Uh, our ninth annual National Safety Town Week, we talked about that. And Children's Press uh, received copy of two more of my books on poisons and bicycles, scheduled for 1984. National Pedestrian Conference uh, was held out in Boulder, Colorado. Remember that from last issue? Uh, our president found the single conference con 
to contain more information on early childhood and preschool safety education than ever presented during her 20 hour attending, uh, 20 years attending a conference. While Dorothy's presentation included information on pedestrian safety of all ages, it focused upon teaching children proper and effective pedestrian safety as well. Okay, October. October, Florida Driver and Traffic Safety Education Association. Remember that? October 12th to 14th, they asked me to go, and I went. And we had a booth display, and I gave a presentation, and uh, very well received. National Safety Congress was held in Chicago October 16th to the 20th. That's a big, big conference with 18,000, 20,000 people. Uh, we attended many se sessions. And now Frank started to attend uh, his chemical research section because he was writing his books uh, and getting articles published all over the country, all over the world. The first meeting, I this is a cute little, little side story here. I had been going to the National Safety Con Congress for several years. And, well, since 1968 was the first one. And I, uh, I can't remember when Frank started going. Maybe 1980, something like that. In the first meeting he goes into, I'm going into um, elementary section, and right next door just happens to be was his chemo was a chemical section for colleges and universities. Now I've been going there for all this time, trying to convince National Safety Council to get on the program, you know, get safety on the program to help promote it and do all this. And with, it took me two years to do the first thing. He goes in his meeting room, sits down, and sits down next to a man who is the editor of a chemical magazine. And in two hours, I'm coming out, and Frank says, oh, I, I'm going to write an article for this man. He's going to put in his publication. Um, it, and I think it was difficult for him to understand, to, to really understand what I had to go through, because I didn't have that that luck that he did. And uh, so when I told him I had to go through all this, I'm sure he, he's probably saying, he probably said in his mind, I don't understand what your problem is. I sit down next to a man and he's there. He says to me, write an article, I'll put it in a, in a publication for you. And so we, I've often laughed about it, that he was uh, seemed to be always at the right time at the right place. And uh, throughout life, he's been very, very lucky. Uh, but he has a lot of talent, too. Not that I don't have talent. I have talent, but... Uh, I think he was just more specialized in what he was doing, and it was accepted, chemical safety, and of course, uh, his, uh, excuse me, I have the hiccups here, um, having uh, been involved in designing the new chemistry buildings, uh, both at Case Western Reserve and University of Akron, and having that received uh, acclaim, uh, he just had a lot of publications uh, and a lot of need for it, where I'm still trying to convince people that, that Preschool safety education is is necessary. That so ninety five percent of my time was doing that. Okay, Veterans of Safety International President Hugh McCray uh, was the featured speaker at the Ohio chapter um, of their October meeting. This was Frank and Dorothy's first meeting as members of VOS. Uh, Fifteen years of service in the safety field is required to become a member. Okay, Mr. McCray took time out while I was in Ohio to come visit our office. Safety songs continue to receive a thorough going over. Our president is working with artist Amy Freden for a coloring book and to, to accompany the tape. And when it says thorough going over, I really went over those wording because some of the wording Debbie had was just not appropriate for kids. It was funny, but I wanted to gear it for our program. Okay, Greater Cleveland Activities. Thank you to Robert, Re Robert J. Rebick. REBIC for donation of three Norelco dictating machines. And a special thanks to Loyal Smith, Jr. Sales Representative DiscWrite for recommending our organization and serving as a liaison. A lot of these people came to, door, to our office all the time as selling us, you know, all kind of typewriters and dictating machines and so forth. This was dictating machines at this time. And I said we didn't, but we had donations. So this Loyal Smith arranged for his company to give us this these dictating machines. We used them for a while, but they were on the little 
little little um, square things with the tape and would get caught and we went back to the old push button type. The 1995 we used to buy at Kmart. We used to buy a lot of those because for some reason I always took them to seminars because I always wanted to record things and once I took the tape out uh, a lot of people, or some people, would take the tape out and leave it on the top, and I'd lose the recorder. So we always had to buy a lot of those. I don't know why. But. Cleveland, Ohio, opened two safety towns, one at Good Samaritan Youth Center, uh, coordinated by Reverend Barnes, and the other at Mary Ireland School, coordinated by Shirley Sims. Okay, Bruce Akers, the Vice President Emeritus, represented a National Safety Town at the ceremony and presented citations to Nancy Brill of Cleveland, Ohio, and George Tewksbury. Uh, of the Automobile Club. Uh, National Safe Town sta staff members were in attendance for the exciting ceremony and presented Reverend Barnes and Shirley Sims with coloring books and frisbees, Bill Cosby graduation hats, child safety books, and other safety games and puzzles provided through the courtesy of Ameritrust for Classroom. So um, as far as buying the material and giving to the local communities, Ameritrust was great on that. We just, we could not get them to just give us, and not only them, but as I said, Stouffer's or whatever, give us a, a just a flat donation of a thousand dollars or two thousand uh, dollars for salary. Uh, the people just seemed not to uh, pay for salaries. They wanted tangible things, and I can understand that, but um, our problem is, number one, we didn't probably mark up the items enough to cover the overhead on that, which we probably should have or just add in their administrative cost, which we found out later with proposals you're supposed to do. Okay, NSTC staff and volunteers assisted by United Way, uh, assisted the United Way Dialathon um, on that. I know Gail would, Colcar went down for a couple years. Our five-year bars are being designed for our registered credit and certified safety towns. The bars will be presented with news releases early spring. Remember I told you when the opens, when we first year the Safe Town started, a community started program, we gave them the nice octagon plaque which cost about $125. It was wood and uh, red pewter, a red with pewter writing on it. <coughs> and um, then what we wanted to do is every five years thereafter add a nice bar. I know, it's so much work. We made it so complicated, so complicated. I can see now what people said to me, you're going in 28 different directions. I think we went in 280 different directions. But anytime something came up, we thought it would help uh, to promote it, and we did it. But anyway, we uh, came up with a nice little bar. We'll show you the bar as well. We have the bar and the plaque. So we started working on that. The Chamber of Commerce meetings in Solon and um, Beechwood Heights. They were, it was called Heights Chamber at the time. It's been changed since then. And then Greater Cleveland Safety Council had another, another Board of Control meeting, and I always went to those. Summit County Safety Council uh, had a meeting, and we sent Gail Colcar to the informative session there. And this, the safety way is a better way was the theme of a safety fair sponsored by Akron General Medical Center, October 13th and 14th. Gail Colcar manned a booth with periodic assistance from Frank and Dorothy Schlatt. All Ohio Safety Congress uh, was held, and of course Frank and I attended. We prepared, we started our Christmas card list as being compiled in the beginning stages of addressing envelopes by volunteers Lisa Tapp, Debbie Flager, and Lynn Matthews. Ken Ferrari informed National Safe Town Center that he is working diligently in researching and compiling the necessary data and estimates, uh, an estimates completion date for his report as February 1984. Okay, and we'll show you his complete report on that. Okay, this is the second part of that newsletter. Okay, here are pictures. This is um, Nancy Brill. We had. Um, Bruce Acres, oops, okay, that's, I'm sorry. Bruce Acres prepare, uh, is giving a citation to Nancy Brill at the uh, safety.
Safety Town in the Cleveland area, and here are just some members of the Safety Town, the Good Samaritan Church. That was the one that was there. And here are some police officers for the kids. And here's Shirley Sims, the coordinator of the Margaret Ireland program I talked about, and we're looking at um, explaining to her the, the child safety books. And this, of course, is Reverend Barnes, and I'm giving him the puzzles that were donated or and paid for by Ameritrust for the kids. Okay, this is. Oh, I know we had some pictures for National Safety Town Week. They should, well, we have more in there, but these are the ones we have in here. Since I always had whoever sponsored the event and paid for it, which was Stouffer's this time, they paid for the breakfast. They, um, this is Dick Atkinson talking to the group. And then here I am presenting, oh, there's a picture. Let me get a nice picture of that. Beautiful picture of Oops, let's do it this way, of um, my presenting beautiful plaque to Andy Cranick. It's a picture of a golfer, and in the golfer's body is written the name Andy Cranick, and that makes up his body, and then it's a clock. We presented one to Bill Cosby uh, one year, but it was with his tennis holding a tennis racket. We'll show you that later. Okay, the back of this is uh, we had um, Nations USA Today. Oh yes, this was exciting. I forgot about this one. Uh, I was, um, when I was down at Grand Ole Opry with Frank, someone came up to me from USA Today and wanted to know my feelings on a uh, topic uh, of the day. So I'll just read what it has here because I haven't seen this for many years. Our president was one of the voices from across the USA in the October 6, 1983 issue who responded to the question, how do you feel about a female vice presidential candidate in 1984? I, my response was, a qualified female could handle the vice presidency, but some, question, some questions should be addressed. How would her own party respond? How would dignitaries relate to her and her position? What if something happened to the president? I'm very confident that a female could handle it, but many people would have doubts. Stated Dorothy Schleier. Okay, that was a nice picture in the paper. There were always six of them. I, I don't know if they still do that or not. I haven't seen USA or that portion of USA Today for a while. And then what price traffic accidents and then uh, an article about safety belts. Okay, we're getting down to the end of the 1983. Playbill, Gershwin Theater, Two Friends. This is when Frank and I went that one day to New York. Remember I said we spent like $1,000 for one day, but uh, we were so, Frank was excited and pleased because we, our fare was, I think, $59, $79, $99, something like that. Round trip, very inexpensive, but everything else was so expensive. But it was fun. I would do it again. I don't think he would, but I would do it again. It was fun. But while we were there, uh, Sammy Davis Jr. and Bill Cosby were at the Gershwin in a little uh, present, uh, show called Two Friends. And it was very, very good. Here's a nice picture of Sammy. It was very informal. You know how Bill sits in his chair and then Sammy came on and did his little shtick and did a little bit of dancing, but um, it was, um, for some reason, it, it never took off, and it wasn't, um, maybe because it was too relaxed, I don't know, but that's how Bill Cosby always does his routine. Let's see if I have a picture here of Bill Cosby. There it is. Okay, there's the two friends with Bill. Okay. And... There was the billing. Okay. Okay. It was funny. It was a comedy thing. It was very funny. We enjoyed that. November 29, 1983. This is a letter I sent to Pierre S. DuPont, governor of Dover, Delaware. 
Dear Governor DuPont, a few years ago you were very gracious to take time from your schedule to meet with me and to autograph a picture and a proclamation. These have been proudly displayed in our offices. However, I recently discovered that the sunlight and or heat has faded away your signature. At your convenience, would you kindly re-autograph the enclosed? Uh, upon their receipt in our office, we will have them sprayed to preserve the signature. Again, thank you for all your cooperation in supporting a program and organization. Now, this was, he returned at 12 83 signed. Um, that's not, I don't know if that date is on the, on the proclamation. Uh, I wanted the date on the proclamation, the actual date, and I'd have to check that. It's in our, in our National Safety Town Week, um, one of the first ones we did, so that's no problem with checking it. Okay, December 2nd, 1983. This is from Denny Griswold, PR News founder and editor of PR News. Um, Dear Dorothy, some time may have lapsed since you were in New York, but the memory, memory of its delight has not dimmed. This was, we were in November with the Bill Cosby. We did the Bill Cosby, the J.C. Penney, um, Denny Griswold, did all of our meetings in one day. Uh, I don't know when we've had a more enjoyable time. When you left us, Lang and I both voiced this, in quotes, what an interesting, enjoyable couple. How we wish they lived in New York so that we could, would see them see more of them. Now, that was to us, to Frank and I, just because this lady, to me, she's on a pedestal. She's done so much known worldwide, and yet she, what, with all the people that she's met across the country, you should have seen her apartment, showed me all kinds of uh, beautiful art objects and things that she got all over the world from various people. And yet here she said she wished we lived in New York so they could see more of us. Um, just nice people. Well, we were nice people, too. We were fun people. And, of course, everyone loved Frank's little stories and jokes. He told them so well. She says, let's continue. Let's not let geography interfere. Let's arrange to see each other as often as possible. Be sure and let us know of any impending visits to New York. And give us lots of advance notice so we will be sure not to, to miss seeing you. Again, thanks for a wonderful experience and the beautiful, beautiful calories we ingested at Claude's. And she always would put proud to serve PR. P.S. Isn't it time for a good case study on National Safety Town Center? What do you have on tap that would be of interest to our public relations and management executives in the U.S., Canada, South America, and 87 other countries? I mean, unbelievable. Just great. November... 1983, the more I, I read this, the more I just have to take time to put this in a wonderful, wonderful national video so people will know this, and also in a book. I, there's just too much stuff here not to, we'll skip out a lot of this, a lot of this is a little hokey, that's, but I have to do that to sort of excite myself, I guess, um, get myself interested in these little trivial things, um, but some of this just, this just has to be printed and has to be shown and uh, put in a nice, nice national video. And I keep saying I want to hire someone like a Billy Anderson, he'll do the final project for me. But I, I would love to find someone who could sit and go through all this what I'm doing and jot down what they think are the most important and, and put it in, in categories like, as I said, all the National Safety Town Week information, all the things from the um, Washington officials, things with Sammy Davis, the Highway Safety Foundation, that all has to be put together, and yet it has to be chronological, so it makes some sense. And uh, I know in the back of my mind how to do it. I don't, have, I don't know if I have the energy or the time to do it. Uh, maybe I'll end up just doing it, but I'll certainly I work with uh, somebody in the in the profession, in the writing profession, but um, I know we have to, they have to get paid, and I don't have money to pay them right now. Maybe I'll win a lottery. November, bi-monthly report. New York was the site of several very productive meetings for Dorothy and Frank Schlad. They met with Harry Russman, that was the man from J.C. Penney, to discuss the future working relationship. 
Now what I wanted him to do is to put a page in the catalog of our safety time materials, our child safety books, our tapes, and so forth. And he told me something that I never would have thought possible or even dreamt of. He said that every page that they put in the catalog, now I don't know if a page was both sides or one side, had to bring in so much in dollars to J.C. Penney's. Now I, the figure that I remember was one million dollars. Now I don't know if that, if I remember that correctly or not. Um, I'm sure in my notes in J.C. Penney file I would find that. Uh, and he just did not feel. He said I would be, we would be competing against the Barbie doll, the G.I. Joes, and all that. And you certainly wouldn't do it. I even offered to pay. For, to have it printed and just have them insert in the catalogs, and that was declined. But we went to um, the very nice restaurant where Jack Parr used to go from um, The Tonight Show, and that was our $60 dinner, a uh, $60 lunch, I believe. Okay, then Denny Griswold uh, and her husband uh, Langdon um, t talks about going to um, uh, a little bit going to dinner and what we talked about. Oh, and while there, we also went to uh, Irving Berlin Studio, and we met with Hilda Snyder, who was the daughter of Ted Snyder, and Ted Snyder was Irving Berlin's partner in their publishing company. Now, the reason for that, of course, Frank was in barber shopping, and several years ago, we started collecting antique sheet, sheet music, and a lot of it is Irving Berlin, and we still, we must have, back in Cleveland, back in, in Aurora, we must have two, at least 2,000 pieces of sheet music, and many of them are Irving Berlin pieces. When we met with Hilda Snyder, and I have a picture of her with Frank, by the way, when we met with her, uh, Frank took up in, in a, in a um, case, uh, a case, what do I want to say, a notebook, a nice notebook um, with the plastic containers. We took a couple of sheet music, pieces of sheet music that we had, and she said, oh, you have two of them that we didn't have. And um, that was, we wanted, we wanted, uh, we would have loved to have Irving Berlin's signature or have him sign an order of autograph, but he was ill and he was not anywhere in New York. He was at, where did she, I can't remember where she said he was staying, um, Massachusetts or somewhere on the farm or his house. But they were very nice to us. Or she was very nice to us. Okay, during uh, their stay, the Schlatz took a brief tour of Radio City Music Hall, had an opportunity to see Sammy and Bill Cosby in their two friends at Kirshman Theater. So we left in the morning, got there, had our lunch with uh, Henry R Russman from J.C. Penney's. Uh, then we met with Hilda Snyder, then we uh, went to our, we checked in our hotel, uh, got dressed, took the cab ride through that park that I mentioned before, um, went to dinner with um, Denny Griswold and her husband, and took the cab back the other way to uh, the Gershwin Theater at night, and then we walked to our hotel room, and then we left the next morning. A lot of work, and, and, a little, and, a, and then we also saw Radio City Music Hall somewhere in there. Okay, I mean, went, went inside for the whole tour of Radio City Music Hall. Articles are being submitted to various uh, safety and education magazines regarding our program and organization. Uh, agreement for our registered credit certified programs was updated and rewritten, which we had to do. That's the one that was um, by National Highway Traffic Safety Administration called us and said we had to have some list of people that were following our curriculum. That's explained in the video number one. Okay, December 3rd annual Safety for Kids auction plans are underway. The event is scheduled for the silent week of February 13th through the 18th of 1994, but we're, 1984, but now we're planning ready. J.C. Penney Corporate Contribution Manager Elizabeth Costas received our proposal request regarding funding of Clancy Films. In our discussion, obviously, with Mr. Rossman, we must have, uh, with Mr. Rossman, we must have talked about them doing the Clancy films, which was not approved. 
bicycle survey regarding young children would be con conducted by National Safety Town Center. Select programs across the country are being contacted to participate in the survey. The safety song tape is undergoing final mixing of song, words, and sound effects. Debbie Flager, Fred Beer, Frank and Dorothy Schlatt carefully listened to the songs and made final corrections. The tape will go to production early 1984. 1984 marks the 20th year of Dorothy Schlatt's involvement in Safety Town program and promotion of the importance of preschool early childhood safety education. Dorothy has indeed been a major factor in the advancement of childhood safety education during the past 20 years. Congratulations, Dorothy, and thank you for your determination, leadership, and dedicated and constant belief in the importance of safety for kids. Some nice things that I think we should have in the final. Um, and the final thing. Okay, uh, Greater Cleveland Activities. Management Assistant Program Project is nearly completed. Dr. J it was for three, three months. Dr. Jan Yankee and Dorothy Schladen met with members of PR a Public Relations Advisory Board to discuss external and internal analysis of our program. The resulting information will be submitted to a foundation for funding to carry out details for the long-range planning. Wow. Okay. Greater Akron Health Fair was, uh, was sponsored by WKR TV, Blue Cross Blue Shield, uh, at the Chapel Hill Mall. NSTC booth was manned by Gail Kalkar, Frank and Dorothy Schland, and with Kramer of Twinsburg. It was a huge success. Again, we had more Chamber of Commerce meetings. Summit Safety Council meeting was held in Akron, which we, at Fairlawn, which we attended. St. Timothy's Head Start Children had a special half-hour safety presentation. Our president took time out from her hectic schedule to personally instruct the two classes. It was really a special treat for me as I enjoyed being back with the kids. I had to do this periodically because I used to get so frustrated with the corporate people and the foundation people and all this paperwork and all these saying the same things over and planning three years and five years and all this that um, I had to go back and be with the kids so I could say, hey, you know, this is what, it's, what I'm in here for. This is why I'm doing all this. We sent 1,000 Christmas cards and pens out uh, to all of our Safety Town people and our board people. Uh, over 1,000 we sent out. Uh, and then we put a thank you in here to our interns and volunteers and everyone who was in here. And then again, as I said, we're going to go back to this. Uh, as 1983 draws to a close, we would like to thank you for the opportunity you have given us to serve you. It has been a very exciting year for us, and we have for us, and we have undergone several changes in order to better assist you and provide you with more services. We are looking forward to working with you during the coming year. On behalf of everyone at the center, we extend to you and your family our best wishes. We did that, but we still sent out Christmas cards, but we're going to eliminate the Christmas cards and just do this. Okay, now, here is this lovely, lovely date lady I mentioned, Denny Griswold. This was in her apartment, her townhouse, three floors, three floors high with an elevator. Just wonderful, wonderful lady. Let me just read to you what it states here. Uh, D uh, Dorothy Schlatt and Denny Griswold and both husbands enjoyed exchanging stories and discussing uh, antiques during a recent visit to the Big Apple. Dorothy and Frank were guests at Denny Park's, Denny's Park Avenue, New York townhouse, which contains beautiful antiques from all over the world. After cocktails, they enjoyed a leisurely three-hour dinner in, at the internationally acclaimed French restaurant Claude's. Denny Griswold is the founder and president of PR News, the international weekly for public relations affair. It was a delightful and productive meeting. This is the 40th anniversary of PR News. Okay. Now, top picture here. Okay. Well, read this one. Dr. Hubert Ollier and Frank Schlad with a chemical toast. Dr. Ollier, professor emeritus from Princeton and known worldwide for his dramatic and witty demonstrations of chemical reactions, was in Cleveland recently to receive the coveted Thomas A. Edison Award for his distinguished contribution in the field of chemistry. Allier 
is also famous for being the inspiration for one of Walt Disney's films. Disney saw him perform at the Belgium World's Fair, flew Fred McMurray there to observe him, and so was born the absent-minded professor. Dorothy and Frank had the honor of hosting Dr. Ollier during his stay. Now, when I took this picture, or I asked Dr. Ollier if I could take the picture of him with, with Frank, he said, oh yes, but not just an ordinary picture. He gets these two containers, puts liquid in, and puts something in to make them color, and he said, I will count to a certain number, whatever it was, and then you take the picture and it will change. And sure enough, the colors changed red and blue. Frank has some fabulous stories, which we'll tell in our, our personal video, of having met him at the airport, um, where he, where Dr. Ali sat on the floor at the airport with the carousel, looking for some clothes, and in there was some white powder and a toy tiger and a pistol. Um, he would have never cleared, I'm sure, cleared up. Uh, security today, but these were parts of the things that he used in his demonstration. But what a delightful man, and he talked about uh, meeting on Tuesday, um, and he would he said, Albert with his violin, me with my cello, and they were all um, Nobel Prize winners at Princeton, and uh, Albert was Albert Einstein. I mean, it was just, this was his friend, these were just normal friends. What, what interesting people. I, I was so probably just as intrigued with him as I was when I met, um, uh, and I can't think of the man's name, isn't that terrible now? Um, father of PR, um, grandfather of PR, I guess. He's written many books and he's up in his 90s. Uh, I was so impressed with his comprehension, his um, alertness, um, and able to, to communicate so well at his age. Uh, just two, two, fab, two of, of many, many men and, and women we, that I've met and Frank has met. But uh, this one, and um, why can't I think of the man's name? It's, isn't that terrible? Uh, but anyway, the, these two men were uh, at the top of my list. Okay, complaint to video uh, writers and directors, we had some, uh, we asked them uh, to, uh, well, let me see, this is quite some time ago. National attention is being given to encouraging motorists to use safety belts. Studies have shown that a mere 10% of Americans use safety belts regularly. This is 1983. Although their life-saving potential has been proven over and over, several organizations believe that the lack of television portrayal of safety belt use is definitely a factor in this low usage rate. Think of the number of car chases and stunts you and your children see on popular television shows such as the Dukes of Hazard, in which little regard for safety is portrayed. The, messages, the message we are given is that drivers can be daring and reckless without worrying of being injured or killed. Less obvious, but equally influential, is the depiction of actors in top-rated primetime dramas like Dallas climbing into automobiles and driving away without buckling up. Such, thing, such scenes only serve to reinforce our unwillingness to use safety belts. Television experts, t oh, I'm sorry, television exerts a powerful influence on Americans' habits and fashion trends. The medium could be our most effective channel to persuade viewers to buckle up regularly. We urge you to speak out in favor of the promotion of safety belt usage on television you can make a difference. Please take a few minutes to write a brief letter on, or postcard and send it to the address, addresses below. The writers and directors of today's television programs have the power to guide television programming in a more safety-oriented direction. Your response will help to alert them to the urgency of the need for increased safety belt use on our highways. Thank you for your interest and support. And then we have right to the Directors Guild of America, in Los Angeles, and Writers Guild of America West, also in Los Angeles. Again, we took time to do this because it's so important, and I'm sure that I know some of our people wrote, and I think this was a start of helping to get things on television. And um, 
we just have to somehow get some money and get this promoted with Safety Town, the spin-offs that Safety Town has done for the society. I guess that's a nice way to, to do it, and that might even be a nice chapter or maybe a title for its own book. That's a great idea. We could do a book on, on the Safety Town story, um, which my book is going to be called Good Grief. All I want to do is help children learn about safety. But this would be great on how our efforts helped the society, what I just said earlier a few minutes ago. Yeah, it's getting tired. It must be about 11.30 now. Um, and then we here in uh, have a nice article about KISS, uh, which is um, a successful loaner program in Wisconsin for child safety seats. I know it also stands for Keep It Simple Stupid, and that's probably what I should have learned earlier. But, uh, I mean, now be, be honest it, with me. And uh, when you hear of all these things that we do, ha have done, and it's not all the things, they're just highlights of things, um, how can you put this in a very short, simple thing? It's got to be done, but we're, we're, we're going to have to to do it somehow. As I said, maybe that's the, uh, the thing. Is I'm trying to get it into one video and one book, and maybe that's not the answer. The answer is one book on the children and then one on the side effects. The spin-offs. There we go. We're gonna be, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to be doing this for a couple years. Okay, we're going to end. I'm tired. I still can't remember that man's name from Pierre. Grandfather Pierre, but I will. All right, see you in the morning. Bye-bye.